And me, he's the better linguist and his German's excellent, so... Four days ago, he had a call to go to Bletchley. That's not unusual, but he was supposed to be back the next day, which was the Tuesday. That bug is coming this way. We're going to have to go into the corridor. Regulations, flying glass, you know. Well, on Wednesday, I thought I'd better check up, and I could tell at once they were trying to keep something from me, so naturally I started phoning everyone I could think of. And... Get down! Down, like the others. Down! Anyway, I finally spoke to someone at the war office and they mentioned Captain Hatchard. I was staggered. I didn't know William had an honorary rank. Deirdre, they must have sent him to France. <sighs> Miles away. On your feet, double quick. You just can't tell when those brutes are going to land. Bloody undignified. Did you hear that, Deirdre, about William? Oh, I wouldn't worry, Phipps. Don't be so damn stupid, Deirdre. I'm worried sick. I want you to help me find him. Me? Phipps, I'm only a welfare girl. Well, somebody in this bloody place must know. All right. All right, Phipps, I'll do my best, but it could take hours. Uh, where are you staying? Uh, the Temple Court Hotel. Will you phone me as soon as you find out anything? Promise. Of course. Right. I'll go back there now. Don't let me down. Here comes another one. Out in the corridor. Get down. Hang on, Phipps! You'd better wait till we all clear! It was ironic. I was on a battlefield, but it was Philippa who was wounded. Not badly, thank God, a lacerated arm and shock. And then came VE Day, followed by the grim dawn of the atomic age. We returned gratefully to academic life in Cambridge, and we were soon competing as fiercely as ever. But perhaps with a, a new edge to our rivals. From the perplexed look on a few faces, I infer that some of you expected Dr. Hatchard to be a woman. So happens there is a female Dr. Hatchard in Cambridge who lectures on the moderns, and those of you misguided enough to prefer such stuff to literature had better hasten to my wife's lecture, which is about to begin in Gosbridge Hall. Goodbye. Try to enjoy it. to old Paddy Tyne. The Huggett professor has retired. After a distinguished career. Distinguished? Merciless, I'd call it. He made me learn Anglo-Saxon. Who gets his chair? Modesty forbids me to name the most likely candidate. William, it is not immodest to take pride in one's wife. I'm not certain if you've met Philip as a Joshua. Yes, last time I was here. You two were keeping the table on a roar. Going to do it again? That was the speciality of Yorick's. William considers himself more like Hamlet. 
Your favourite play, isn't it? Any hero who thinks women belong in a nunnery gets my vote. Of course, all the men in Hamlet slaughter each other. Because of the treasury of a woman. <laughs> you two ought to do this kind of thing on television. It's most of the rubbish they put out. Have you got a television? Oh, I've heard that it works both ways, and they can watch you at home. <laughs> Boon for the peeping Tom, eh? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure it's one way. Damn, or better be. Come for our tennis rackets, Hatchards. They've been restrung. Uh, Hatchards rackets, sir? Uh, not in the sense that they were manufactured by a company called Hatchard, in the sense that they're the property of the two doctors, Hatchard. Yes. There we are. I'll see if they're ready, sir. Morning, Dr. Hatchard. You may applaud your discrimination, Miss Isaacs, but not your industry. Shouldn't you be at my wife's lecture? Oh, you bet, Dr. Hatchard. And I was really looking forward to it. Dr. Hatcher, the other Dr. Hatcher, is just so illuminating. Then why deprive yourself of this radiance? Well, her lecture was cancelled. Ah, yes, I'd forgotten. It doesn't taste much like the ones we had in Spain. Perhaps our saffron isn't as strong. <clears throat> Gather you cancelled your lecture this morning. Now, how do you know that? And because you know as well as I do that in Cambridge you can't scratch your nose without someone reporting it. I bumped into that eager American girl of yours. Susan Isaacs? Hmm. Why? You mean, why did I cancel my lecture? You haven't taken a lover, have you? Oh, don't be childish. Then please provide a plausible alternative explanation immediately. Damn. Tell me. I'm going to. I just wanted to have the results of the test. What tests? Blood tests. William, we might still be able to do it. Do what, for God's sake? Have a baby. but you've already had two miscarriages. I know, but Ben says it might be possible now. Ben Walton. Yes. You know, I went to see him about my shoulder the other week. Well, he told me then about a new operation they've perfected in America. And they're starting to do it here now, too. So he sent me to see a gynecologist, and that's where I've been. That's why I had to cancel my lecture. <clears throat> and shouldn't you have mentioned all this? I suppose so. I just didn't want to raise your hopes. Oh, that's absurd. You know perfectly well I haven't thought about anything like that for years. Well, it seems to be quite hopeful. The gynaecologist says I'm a very suitable patient. He took some blood and if the results are all right, he can do the operation in two weeks. Two weeks? He's got a vacancy then. William, there is some urgency. I'm about at the upper age limit. <clears throat> Aren't you pleased? If, uh, if we could. But does it have to be quite so rushed? I honestly think it does. And you haven't forgotten they're announcing the Huggett at the end of the month? Well, if I'm about to become a rather mature mother, I might have to resign in your favour. Ah. 
I wanted to catch you before you left for your lecture. Oh, you haven't really, Simon. I'm late. There's nothing wrong, I hope. No, no. Quite the reverse. I think I've got you a chair. You what? A professorship. King's at London. Not in my gift, of course, but I carry some weight there. I put you forward. What on earth for? Because you deserve it. But I wouldn't... I couldn't leave Cambridge. You mean William, don't you? No. Yes. Oh, Simon, I wish you'd consulted me. You'll never get one here, you know. Cambridge is hardly the most progressive university in England. Possibly not. But I think I still stand a chance for the Huggett. I wouldn't be the first woman professor. Be realistic, Philippa. William will get it. Really? Well, look, there's no rush. If William does get the Huggett, will you at least consider London? I... Good. Well, I... Good. I'll tell them you'll think it over. Simon, hang on a minute. Simon! You don't mean it? Yes, you're filling the room with disgusting smoke. Anyway, I want to settle in and you're oozing anxiety. Rubbish, totally collective. But I'm certainly a little surprised at your eagerness to get rid of me. Oh, William, there's nothing you can do now. Go. You're going up to the theatre at half past ten? Yes. I shall be here at ten. Oh, don't be absurd, you've got a lecture. I will not mumble about Chaucer and Langland while my wife is undergoing surgery. I should be here. At ten. Give me a kiss and clear off. Go, go, go. See you in the morning at half past nine. Ellen, any chance of a word with Ben? Oh, he's got a patient with him at the moment, but um, if you come in and wait a bit, I'll see. Okay. Oh. Sorry to keep you, Bell. Not at all. Good of you to see me. Come on in. Been to the hospital? Uh, yes. Worried. Mm. Not about Philippa. I am, yeah. Well, she's very keen, Bill. She's keen because she imagines I'm pining for a child. Aren't you? Not anymore, no. Well, there's a high probability that you're going to have one. I'd like to know more about this operation. Technical details? I'd like to know how safe it is. Well, in California, where they pioneered it, they have a 4% mortality rate. That's unacceptably high. We're doing a great deal better than that, but the hard fact is that we haven't been doing it long enough to have proper statistics. In a few years' time, it'll be safe as having your tonsils out. But by that time, it'll be too late to help you and Philippa. What on earth are you doing back? The risk is unacceptable. What? Please get dressed. I'm taking you home. Oh, don't be absurd, William. Here we are. You have no jurisdiction over my body. I intend to have this operation. What are you doing? 
That's perfectly all right. I'm Dr. Hatchard. She's my wife. Stop it. Do you hit me? I... How dare you? Leave him, sister. It's outrageous. I shall call the porters. They can handle this. Get in, please. I'm not leaving you here. I guess it's pretty unusual for a woman to be made a professor at Cambridge. Yes, it is. Of course, in the States, we've had lots of lady professors for ages. Though none of the ones I met were half as good as your wife. Ah. She's just great. You know, it's ironic. What is? Coalport rang me this morning. That's my man in London. It seems they were on the point of offering you the chair. Oh dear, I hope that hasn't embarrassed you, Simon. Not at all. I'm delighted. Ah, there comes William. I say, Simon, don't mention it. Don't mention what? London. It's just that I never, never told him. Simon. Hello, William. I'm just off to get some drinks. Can I get you one? Uh, the claret, if you please. Philippa? Thank you. Having fun? Bliss. Beats changing nappies, wouldn't you say? No comparison. Oh dear, not still smarting about the hugget, are we? No, we are not, since we've been given a professorship of our own. You don't feel that might be a consolation prize? Certainly not. Women must display twice the learning and three times the eloquence. Sour grapes? Should the Huggett professor converse exclusively in clichés? Only if the lady professor indulges in sophistry. Simon, wouldn't you say that Philippa's chair is a consolation prize for not getting the Huggett? No question. You're in the lead, William. The only way Philippa could claim precedence would be if she'd been offered two professorships. Two? What do you mean, two? Oh, I don't know. One in some other university. London, say. London, which college? I say this is a good claret, William. If there's something really patrician, you'll have to wait for my party this evening. Which college are you talking about? Simon, I'd like you to meet that person I told you about. Which person is that, Philippa? The one who... Look, she's over there. Do come along. So they both got professorships. There wasn't much option. Really? Why? They're very competitive. If only one of them had been made a professor, the other would have made all our lives a misery. Oh, is Cambridge really as indulgent as that? I think the general feeling was that we couldn't afford to risk losing one of them to another university. I see. What about next Sunday? That would be lovely. Then you'll come. The only thing is, there'll be swarms of children. An added attraction. William dotes on them. Casserole, preferably. I do you suggest. Swiftian, surely. My wife suffers from periodic bouts of impatience with undergraduates, and at such times she imagines a howling brat would be a preferable alternative. I think I'm a little tired. I shall ask the master's permission to withdraw.
I apologize for my tasteless remarks. I came as soon as I decently could. Why are you packing? I'm thinking of taking a little trip. <clears throat> Where to? Possibly to Rome. Ah. Why? To escape your presence, William. You have tolerated it with some equanimity for nearly two decades. I've also been exposed to its full brutality. I admit that what I said was brutal. I mean depriving me of a child. Sheer histrionics. How dare you? You have condemned me to barrenness. You are not barren. Here is your fine study of Browning. You have given the world five books. You will give it more. Books of living things. Do you consider that Jane Austen was barren or the Brontes? No, the truth is you never really wanted a child and you generously responded to my longing. I did not. I wanted a baby. A flesh and blood baby that would be part of us, that would grow. Your metaphor, William, is both pompous and unkind. Books are not living things. They may express life, they may change life, but they are not alive. Of course your desire a child was part of my motivation, but my own was just as strong. Yes. Oh, uh, yes, of course it was. Too. No, the truth is I was just too cowardly. There was a risk to that operation, and I simply couldn't face it. Even the remote possibility of losing you was more than... was more than... Lovely object. Why is that a pity? Because, William, it must go. That was a very good pipe and cost over five pounds. I read a most instructive article in the Times this morning, giving the result of new research which proves that smoking is dangerous. Your longevity matters as much to me as mine does to you. Come on, we'll buy you some chewing gum. Mm -hmm. 